This is a demonstration of a darkroom timer I built. Uh, it's based on an Arduino design I found on the internet that was open source. It has a uh, 16 character by 2 line LCD display and a keypad for control, two buttons, one for mode setting and the other for starting and stopping the exposure. And uh, it's uh, fairly basic. It has a linear mode but it also has a f-stop mode that allows adjusting the exposure in terms of f-stops rather than in absolute linear time which can be very handy uh, because you're working in the same units that you would with a camera so it uh, it lends itself to kind of a easier adjustment of exposure. For the purposes of the demo um, I'm sitting on the enlarger base here but I've got two light bulbs uh, plugged in to take the place of the safe light, which is the red light, and then the enlarger itself, which is represented by the white light bulb to the left of the unit. So it uh, powers up in um, the last mode that was used, in this case the stopwatch mode. Uh, the A, B, C, D keys select the various functions within the two modes available. Th those modes are the linear mode, which is it, what it's in right now, Pressing the black button switches to the opposite mode, which is the f-stop mode. And there's four functions, again, within each one of those modes. So looking at the um, linear mode, the first mode is the setup mode. Within that setup mode, there is the option to turn the sound on and off. There's a beeper, the small hole here at the top of the case, that beeps every second during the timing functions and various other operating conditions. So that can be turned on and off and it will be remembered after a, a reset or a power down and power up that's stored in permanent memory inside the chip inside of the timer. Uh, you can also set in this uh, A function in the linear mode any of the, um, any of the nine available channels. Each one of these channels stores separate timings for each of the modes. So for example, for channel 1, for all the various modes that we're going to go through and demonstrate, the sets of timings that have last been used will be saved, and then the uh, operator can switch to a different channel and have an entirely different set of timings for various darkroom operations. I haven't found it too terribly useful, but it is built into the software. The uh, channel selection and the times are not saved in non-volatile memory. So those will be lost after the power is turned off and on. It seemed um, counterproductive to save those because it took a lot of time to clear them when you wanted to do a new print, so I just made them non-volatile in the code. So that's about it for the, uh, the A function in the linear mode. Well, one additional thing, you have the capability of, there's no timer mode, but there is the capability of turning the enlarger on and off. For the purposes of framing up your paper and um, and focusing, and that's done with the red exposure key. So when that's pressed, the dark room um, safe light outlet is switched off on the back, and the enlarger is switched on. That'll remain on as long um, as necessary, and when a second press on that will switch back to the um, to the safe light mode, turning the enlarger off. The uh, still in linear mode here, the second function is the stopwatch mode. In this mode, the timer counts up starting at zero, and um, it'll count up in an unlimited fashion for timing various darkroom operations. And at the same time, it'll also turn on the enlarger. So pressing that, you can see that the timer is now incrementing. And um, if the sound were switched on, which it's not, let me do that. Go back to setup, sound on, stopwatch. You can hear it counts up. So that's kind of handy if you're using a metronome style of timing where you're actually mentally counting the seconds to, uh, to time a certain operation. This lends itself to that. Pressing it again freezes the count. It's possible to reset the timer by pressing the star and the asterisk key simultaneously, and that will reset the time. And that's true of any of the modes. Pressing star and pound uh, resets the, uh, the set time on the display. 
Uh, C is probably the most used function on the timer. It's the countdown function. This allows entering up to 999.9 seconds and pressing the button then counts down to zero, turning the enlarger on and off at the appropriate times. So for example, for a 15 second, 15 and a half second exposure, I would type one, five, and then zero. And uh, that's 15 seconds. And if I wanted, well, let's see, let's try it again. One, five, five, 15 and one half seconds. And then pressing the button, The uh, final function in the linear mode is the D function. It's called the DDS mode after, I believe, the initials of a contributor on the Italian website where this code initiated. But it's, uh, it's a function that uh, is sort of similar to the countdown function. It allows setting up a time. We'll set it to um, five seconds. And it works exactly like the countdown function, but it has the added capability of turning the enlarger on and off with the first two presses of the exposure button and then it does the actual timed countdown so you can actually do your focusing without having to change modes. So the first press does not start the timer but does switch the enlarger on. The second press turns the enlarger off retaining the time and the third press initiates the countdown as normal. So that's it for the linear mode. It's quite simple. A press of the black button will change into the corresponding function on the f-stop side. And there's again four functions in the f-stop mode. So pressing A allows us to um, again manually control as in the linear mode the, uh, the enlarger by just depressing the red exposure button and that just manually toggles the enlarger on and off. You can also set in the A mode the precision of the f-stop increments, the, the step if you will. So pressing 1 will set to a, a one-stop precision, 2 sets one-half, 3 sets a third, and so on all the way up to 1 48th of a stop which is a bit ridiculous but there are enough keys to support it, so I guess that's why it was included. So it does support very fine f-stop adjustments. I normally keep it at about a half a stop, like this. So those are the only two functions in the A mode. In the B mode, there's a f-stop test strip function, and that allows um, setting up a certain base exposure in seconds, and let's say that's five seconds. And then um, for the first five seconds of the exposure, when the exposure button is pressed, there's no sounds or any other, um, any other announcements from the timer. But thereafter, at one half stop increments of time that are calculated internally, the timer will give an audio warning, and that's a signal to progressively cover up sections of a, exposed, uh, of a test strip that you've got on the, under the enlarger. So just to uh, demonstrate, in fact, let's set that a little bit higher. Let's set it to 8 seconds. And we'll try it. So now the base exposure is being done, and it'll count again up to 8. And then thereafter, a half stop later, okay, well, that's the base exposure. It's the first half stop. It's one stop up. one and a half stops and so forth. It'll just continually count upward until it's manually interrupted. So that's useful again for generating a test strip by progressively covering up a section of the paper as it's exposed and um, provides test strip sections that are not in multiples of a fixed time but actually in f-stop units. So if you're using the f-stop mode that's useful and then doing your final exposure. Normally that would be done with the C key, which is the f-stop countdown mode. Now this works identically to the linear countdown mode. So in other words, if I were to set five seconds, 
press the button, it would just do a normal countdown of five seconds. However, it is possible after developing and looking at your print that you might want to increase the exposure in one half stop, in this case increments. Pressing the pound key will increase the time in f stop so that the time increase is calculated using powers of 2, uh, which is what f stops are based on, based upon. And you can press the star key to step back down again, so we're back at 5. And um, you can go downward and then back up again. Now, uh, because of rounding errors uh, that are inevitable in the Arduino, it is possible that you're going to accumulate some errors if you go up and down again. So it may be necessary to reset this timer if you're going up and down and back and doing a lot of manipulations. But for a straightforward addition or subtraction in the selected f-stop units, this can be quite useful. It can also be done to manually generate test strips by setting a base exposure of, say, 10 seconds, uh, doing your exposure of one section of the sheet, bumping it up a half f-stop, which in this case would be 14.1 seconds, doing another section of the paper, and so forth. So that can be done as well. So very useful for adjusting your exposure in terms of f-stop. The uh, second, or I'm sorry, the final function is function D, which is the f-stop burn and dodge function. So you can set, in this case, a base exposure, which let's say would be 10 seconds. And say we want to do a, uh, is it burn? Say we want to do a burn, we would press the pound key. Uh, that's going to give us a one-half stop burn. So by pressing that, you can see that the burn exposure is set to 5 seconds, which is half a stop from 10. Uh, and it will split the exposure into two parts. The first part will be the a part of the exposure where most of the print is masked and the part of the image that needs to be burned is uncovered. So you would place your mask uh, accordingly and then press the exposure key. So the half stop burn interval is calculated. It turns off and then your base exposure is displayed, which is 10 seconds. The mask is removed and then the button would be pressed and the balance of the uh, exposure for the entire print would be done. The second function is, uh, again in D, is uh, accessed with the, um, with the asterisk key, and that is the dodge function. By pressing that, 50% um, or half a stop down from the base exposure is calculated. And again, the exposure is split into two, but with the opposite intent. So in this case, you would be using a paddle to dodge a section of the print that you wanted to lighten. So you would place your paddle or place your obstruction over the print. You would um, press the star key off your, after entering your base exposure. That's going to give you an adjustment downward based on this f-stop increment. And then you make your initial exposure with the paddle in place. So now you've got half of your total exposure on the entire print, no exposure on the masked off area or the obstructed area. The balance of the 10 second uh, base exposure is then 5 seconds. You would remove the paddle and then press it again and that would perform the balance of the um, of the um, of the burn or of the dodge. So that's about it. Um, the function set is pretty simple. It has very basic f-stop functions. It doesn't do multi-step uh, memories or anything like that. It's all fairly manual, but I find it extremely understandable and it's just a good basic unit. The unit itself was extremely simple to build. I developed the code on the Arduino and then transferred it into the Admega 328P chip, which uh, Arduino's some Arduinos are based upon. And that simplified the parts count for me, but it might be easier just to use a plain Arduino board. So there are some um, diagrams of the wiring on the uh, FODRIO site as well as my modified code that supports the functions. There were a few bugs on the initial set of Italian uh, website code that I picked up that was open source. So I've uh, pretty well debugged those 
and corrected some of the timing um, calculation errors that were present there. They were fairly minor, but they did need to be fixed for some consistent operation. So all in all, fairly nice little project. It's inexpensive. I think the keypad's about $2 on eBay. The buttons were about $0.50 cents a piece. The display was $4. The, uh, the chip was about $2. And the support components probably totaled up altogether probably about another five or six dollars. I did have the case available and I just peeled off the back of the keypad and milled in a slot on the front of the case and that just sticks onto the onto the case. This is from an old power supply that I had lying around and it happened to work out well. As I mentioned the um, the uh, display actually is a uh, 16 by 2 backlit LCD display. It's best to get a display that has a negative image, in other words, a dark background with, with light or illuminated letters. This one was blue because that's what I had on hand, so I corrected that uh, problem in the dark room by putting a piece of ruby lith filtering paper or transparency over the lens and then taping it with electrical tape. So that eliminates any light leaks or any blue light leaking out into the dark room. And uh, that's about it. Very nice functional timer and um, quite inexpensive compared to comparable commercial units.